I always liked the smell of my office on a Monday night. Kept the smell of the streets from reaching my nostrils. The streets, the stench of crime. I was in my office on that stormy night in mid-April, the night where I was pondering over the greatest case of my life. The smell of crime was beginning to overpower the smell of my office. This case was so grisly, so diabolical, that even the devil would have spit it out. There was a lot to go over, and I knew my only companion of the night would be the thunder which could rival the clap of God. The rainfall against my window reminded me of the scurrying feet of a million rats, a common sound in the streets and crime dens. My mind was filled with a million different clicking gears which all seemed to point towards this being a very long night. My secretaries, Daniel and Chrissy, had left for the night, so all I had was the brew as cold as the heart of a woman scorned. With every sip I felt a deep feeling develop in my gut, like some kind of sickening revelation would soon reveal itself. And I always trusted my gut. That was good, but that's not what this is really about. Personalized learning refers to instruction in which the pace of learning and the instructional approach are optimized for the needs of each learner. Learning objectives, instructional approaches, and instructional content may all vary based on learner needs. In addition, learning activities are meaningful and relevant to learners, driven by their interests and often self-initiated. Students and teachers are embarking on a personalization journey. These are their stories. So what is personalization anyway? The basic idea is putting education back in the hands of the students. This allows them to do things in their own way and at their own pace. There are several different ways to do this, but here at JMH we have the idea of a final project. This final project allows us to demonstrate mastery of the outcomes and complete any course. Uh, personalized learning's kind of been a buzzword, I would say, for probably four or five years. Okay, perfect. I will mess up, I'm sure. Personalized learning in itself um, has become a, 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 a new term which simply tells us that we need to uh, meet kids where they're at. Three years ago we went on a trip to San Diego, a professional development trip, and we visited High Tech High and Design 39 and some other schools, and one of the schools was a public school as well, uh, Vista High. I really became familiar with it when we started to look at, uh, well we went away on a trip uh, to California to uh, High Tech High. Um, Mr. Noel will tell you he actually went to debunk the idea because he thought it was not going to work, so he went as the naysayer of the group. I can remember having a, one of the PD days at the first of the year, and, and when they were talking about it, I remember thinking, this is such garbage. This is, this is a joke. And by the time we got back on the plane, um, the teachers who went were already planning how it was going to happen and how they could make it work because they were so excited by what they saw there. Uh, I, I can remember the moment, I can remember it specifically. Um, Mr. Terrio was in one classroom at High Tech High and I was in another room across the hall and we both walked out at the same time and looked at each other and just kind of nodded at each other with a smile, just like, yeah, this is, this is real, this is, this is the way to go. I remember that moment perfectly. We really got to see how we could make it work. Even though we knew we couldn't replicate it, we, we realized that you know, we could do a lot of this with our students and we saw the benefits, so. 20 years ago, in, in English classes, that was a lot of read the story, do these questions. Read the book, do these chapter questions. And so it was a lot of that. And I started seeing that that wasn't always engaging for students. And so by, by understanding that the students could do a bit more and and that they were kind of bored and not quite engaged by that type of demonstration of learning. Um, I started changing things up a little bit. and So I started really by giving them the choices maybe in how they demonstrated things. So maybe they would have a choice in, instead of doing a bunch of chapter questions for a book, perhaps it was a different kind of project that they were interested in or something that allowed them to express their talents as well. So as, as I could see that that created engagement, then I started realizing, well, perhaps if there's more personalization and more choice in what they do and what they consume in English, that that might make a difference as well. And so every year I would kind of expand it, and now um, it's a choice of whatever book you want, as long as you're demonstrating these outcomes. Since bringing personalization to JMH, students and teachers have both told us about a noticeable increase in attendance. 
students would specifically come just to work on their projects because they enjoyed it that much. So we asked a few people how personalized learning has affected attendance here at James and Howe. We saw that with the block um, when we looked at student attendance and engagement and you know students that sometimes weren't our best attenders but would come for those classes. Um, it kind of became a problem because sometimes they wouldn't come for the classes that weren't personalized learning classes. But um, it certainly did, does have an impact um, and we could see that in numbers as well as in just what they're telling us, just in anecdotal evidence. That, that stood out to us um, and actually there was a story we had of a student told us that they were, they hardly ever attended and then when they get into the block, which is what we are sort of named for our personalized section of it, um, they would come to the block and then go home. They didn't come for the rest of the day. Yeah, attendance is, it, 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 for those kids that grasp on, that grasp on to this idea, attendance changes is, it, it, is awesome because they now have a purpose for coming to school. You know when you sit in a class and you go, oh, why am I doing this, right? And you wonder, well, why am I doing this assignment again? Didn't I just do this thing before? Or how many times can I do the same assignment? And we wonder, what, why are we doing this, right? Well, the attendance shift happens when it becomes your own work. And so since it's your own work, you have to actually be there to do your own work. And you're excited to do your own work. It's your own creation, your own your own learning and when you take that on um, but then you have meaning to be there it's like why do you come to work well we come to work and the, 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 the people who enjoy their jobs the best have meaning and they have ownership in their job and their job has allowed them to they're not doing something monotonous they're doing something that they like and they've created their own way of doing their jobs right and that's what we're doing in the classroom Students here at JMH have found great successes with their projects. One group of students even turned their project into a very successful business. Yeah, students have done everything here from uh, starting clothing companies to extracting DNA from a tree to even selling their very own 3D printers. Uh, well, with economics class, first period we go down and we will either be doing a in-class lesson or we'll be working on our projects. So if it's an in-class lesson, it'll be because we're hitting an outcome that we couldn't do through our project. And uh, if we're not, and it's a project day, then me and my partner Nick will go down to Mr. Terrio's room and we will work on our project where we're starting a company to sell 3D printers. Basically, it's, uh, you get to do whatever you want as like a project or anything, but you get to take like different uh, course outcomes and stuff like that, and then uh, pretty much like mix them all together so it meets whatever your project that you're doing. So like, for instance, I'm doing like a more of an art thing, so uh, I take some like art outcomes, but then I can take from like uh, I could take from modern history. I could take what, depending what my project's based around. I was actually in one of the first block classes for James and Health, and I worked on a project where we were trying to supply prosthetic limbs to people in third world countries. We went in on a business partnership together, and it's called Print ER Solar 3D Design, and we're selling low cost affordable 3D printers and we're hoping to design them so that they can run off solar power. We actually have prototypes of this and uh, we're also going to be selling like plastics and doing 3D printer repair. Right now I'm doing an awareness campaign so I started out with like using the silk screen equipment and stuff like that so I've been making a lot of like art pieces and clothing so uh, for the awareness campaign I'm basing it off of different people in history and uh, most of them are people of color because they didn't get the recognition for their achievements and stuff and different like uh, depending if they're activists or if they're artists or even musicians and stuff. So I'm just basing off uh, different people who I think deserve recognition for whether it be like their music or just whatever they did in history but uh, so I'm making like art pieces and I'm making different social media posts but in the end, I want to try to raise awareness for their, just to keep their name and stuff alive. One of the best parts of the block is that for things like English class, you do a lot of, uh, I guess, grant writing. So where you'd be writing a letter to a non-existent company in English class, well, we would be writing an email to a company trying to get funding for our projects. 
a lot of times too where we're working on such uh, things like green energy, right, with like the solar power project. Uh, a lot of companies think it's great to help high school students, so there's a lot of money that kind of gets thrown at those kinds of issues, even by like the government, right? And uh, the block teaches you kind of how to take advantage of that. It's more open what I get to do, so I'm not getting a bunch of assignments and stuff of stuff maybe I don't want to do or stuff that like I could have trouble doing. I make my own course pretty much. So if I went from having you know some lower marks in English because I hated writing essays to being now I have you know high 90s, mid 80s in almost all my classes. So it's every like it's right between there and it's great because I'm not doing textbook work. I'm doing work I want to do to hit the outcomes for the classes I want to take. You can't really mess it up because you're doing your own thing. So I find it make people more it make more people want to come to school if you could do your own like project and more like because you're not worrying about the grade. If it's something you're good at, you can't mess it up. Uh, so I've taken physics 11. I've taken English, I took world issues, I took digital productions, and I took economics in both my English classes. So uh, since I get to make my own like rubric, I'm meeting different like art outcomes and different, uh, so where I'm basing off people in history. So I could take different modern history outcomes and different like world issues maybe, but I can take it all like, I don't have to base it all off art and I don't have to base it all off one thing. It's basically a mixture of stuff that I know my project's going to meet every one of the outcomes. Uh, so with personalized learning, I found I learned a lot about time management. I learned about uh, reaching out to people, writing grants, trying to find money in places you never knew there was money. Uh, a lot of community outreach, you know, like making advertisements, there was graphic design. I learned about 3D printers, I learned about how to build 3D printers, and I learned how to code 3D printers, like code the firmware for them. I'm using my project in journalism and I'm also in a business class so I can also base my project on that too and with different so depending writing an essay or whatever it has to be but so I can keep the project continuing in next semester or whenever I want to keep going especially like the art part and stuff like that. Would you ever go back to the traditional way of learning? <laughs> well, COVID forced us to go back, and it's it's uh, it's it's not. I, and I mean, for years I taught this way, in that traditional way, and and you know I thought I was in control of things. But um, no, the, the, the personalized learning is the way to. It's hard to give up that control. It's a little bit scary um, to give up that control, but um, that's the only way to teach as far as I'm concerned. Like for me personally, that's, I, 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 I wouldn't say I don't like teaching the traditional way, but you know, when you have students who chose to do personalized learning and um, you know, if those types of students were in your traditional room, you could see the lack of engagement, you, you know, so it's, it's just, I would rather do it that way because students are doing what they want to do. I, I, I can't now. Um, this COVID experience has really taught me that I can't. I'm sitting most of the time bored in my classroom. I'm, I'm, I, I understand that with COVID itself, we have some pressures and we have some, uh, but what has, what has happened with COVID has allowed us to all go back into the same monotony of education, right? Here's an assignment, just do this. You do your work, I'll do my work. But little, react, little, little interactions aren't happening. Uh, rapport is not being built the way that I like it to be built. Um, my students aren't becoming thinkers. I mean, I have a debate in class and they're just rather just right. You know, um, they, nobody wants to be wrong. Nobody wants to discover anything. So COVID has taught us that we need to do these kinds of things. And I'm not enjoying my job this way because, I mean, I've done this monotony before. Uh, I want every day to be something different. I want students to challenge me. I want to learn too, right? And when students come up with these crazy ideas or they teach me something about a foundation that I've never heard of or they start to think, hey, can we do it this way? Or they invent things. They're teaching me. There's a lot of times uh, we look at these programs. I remember in the block, we would have uh, students talk to us about things like science and, and I knew nothing about science. I'm, I'm the science dummy. 
I'm dummy for a lot of things, but science especially. And they would talk to us about these things and I'd feel unequipped. And I have to go home and do research on some of the things that my students are doing because I am, I'm not versed in it, which is great because then now learning is happening not only for the student, but also for the teacher. So we're all growing, right? So I, I wanna go back to this format of teaching. I wanna go back to this format of learning myself because I think that makes me excited to come to school every day. No, because it's, it didn't work and it's not, I mean, it worked to a point, um, but it didn't, it just didn't tap into students' deeper levels of thinking and it, it didn't force them to do that. And this new way does. And, and I don't even know that it's a new way. I think good teachers have always been incorporating in like individualized stuff into their teaching. Um, I also think our, our world, the world today is completely different from the world that I went to school in. So I might not have had many books around, I might not have had many reference books around my house and so learning content was important. I did have to memorize dates and I did have to memorize formulas and I did because I didn't have anywhere else to look it up. You, your generation, will always have the world of information at your fingertips. So we don't need to learn that content anymore because you'll always be able to look it up. We need to learn how to deal with that content and how to think on a deeper level and, and just work with that information that's out there. So it's a different, you have a different need than I would have had when I went to high school. And so the education system should, should have changed completely with that. And it's, it's only just starting to. So I, I don't, there, there's no need to go back. We don't need all that content anymore. You, you have it, you can look it up. So let's do something else with our brains rather than just memorize all that stuff. Okay, so how do we start this? How about we just ask like questions to ourselves? Like, yeah, let's stick with that one question. What did you guys like want to learn? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who's gonna go first? Sean. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's got us you guys. <laughs> Who's gonna go second? You. Yeah. I don't know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, Okay, what did you want to learn from this? So like the biggest thing I wanted to get out of this was I want to get more comfortable in front of a camera and speaking in public. That's nice. Cool. Um, I just really wanted to show people that this is a better way to learn and that there is a way to really enjoy school and get the word out. Yeah, like for me, I didn't really want to like, not, I would, didn't necessarily like go in looking for something to learn. I just fell in love with the concept of the block and how it's so efficient in teaching students what they need to learn and it's not like forcing anything upon them it's their own interest and that just makes all of their work a lot better because they take ownership of it and at the end of the day they're gonna be very proud to show off their work which is something that the school system lacks because you know get an 85 or a 90 it's like okay yeah it's a good put it's a good flex, but when when you have a project like this, like this is probably the best project I've ever done, ever. Yeah. And it's the it's the most fun I've yeah. ever had in school. Yeah, and along the way we've made tons of connections and relationships with the teachers who helped us, like Mr. Terrio, Mr. Noel, Mr. Gopi, the people who started the block and introduced us to it and made us see that there is a way to love school. And it also I didn't know them at all before we started and now we're three of the closest people in yeah. the class. Yeah. And it just, it changed school for us. It changed school for me forever. Yeah. Where we're graduating, this is our final year and we ended it with the best project I've ever done in school. Definitely made school a lot more enjoyable because like in grade 11, I didn't really want to be in school, like I'll be honest. And when I started working with them in this project, I'm like, okay, it's fourth period now. I am going to enjoy this. It's just, and especially like fourth period, it's, I look, for, I look forward to this period a lot. And that's very rare for someone who didn't want to be here at all. Yeah, you were just in journalism, right? Yeah. I was here for sociology, world issues, and journalism. I worked on this for three hours a day. <laughs> that's very yeah, that's, that's good. We, we, we won't have finished a lot sooner. 
hopefully people take it seriously and they actually register for the vlog because trust me i know there are some kids there that do not want to try this because they're okay with the normal way of doing things like follow what the teacher says but as a guy that was like that in grade 11 try this just try it and bro there's one week to try it out and if you don't like it you can drop out that's right. the best advice we could give you. Yeah, just try it. Just Trust try me. it out.